Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I see quite a few people have joined this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to this broadcast. Amen. Uh, today is uh, November the 10th, 2019. Glory to God. And uh, we're going to be getting into the Word of God. Amen. I have a lot to share with you guys. Uh, we just uh, took a trip to uh, McDaniels, Kentucky. And we went down there to bring what we call the Kingdom Summit to that uh, to that region. Amen. And uh, there was a lot of just so much grace and so so many wonderful things that that happened. And uh, but uh, you know what? Let me let me get started with some prayer. Amen. Glory to God. Father in Jesus' name, I thank you for this tremendous opportunity, Father God. As I stand here in your presence, Father, ministering the words of life to your people, sharing them, sharing with them, Father God, the experiences of your work in our hearts and in our lives, Father God, breaking them, breaking off that bread of life, amen, that's part of our lives, Jesus Christ, and distributing, Father God, to your people, Father God, distributing to your sons and daughters, Father God, that they might have life, amen. I thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity, Father, and for all the many that are listening to this broadcast and that we're listening to the future. And I thank you for the seed of your word, Father God, that's getting in our hearts, amen, the sperm of God, amen, that seed of God that gets in our hearts and bring for, brings forth the product called Christ, amen, Jesus Christ, amen, in our lives, in our character, Father God, and the way we carry ourselves, Father God. And our conduct, Father God, what we're hearing, what we're seeing, what we're saying, glory to God, what we're touching, amen. All of our lives, Father God, in every aspect reflecting the character of Christ, amen. I thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name, as your word declares, for as many as received him, to them give he the power to become the sons of God, amen. That word power is exousia, glory to God, and it means authority, Father. And I thank you, Father, that we have authority to become, Father, be generated into sons of God, amen into technons that we might come into maturity as we are fully matured sons, amen. For you seek sons, amen, that would grow up, amen, that you might lay your burden on us, amen, your work for our lives and for the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, again for this opportunity, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence. We bless you, Father, and we love you in Jesus' name, amen. Well, like I said, uh, we just got back from a trip in, uh, in McDaniels, Kentucky, and uh, Quite a bit happened while we were there, and uh, it was it was a 10-hour trip to get there. It took us 14 hours to get back because of traffic and problems of that nature. But uh, it was uh, it was quite an experience, and uh, it was a great uh, time of fellowship with the brethren, amen, like-minded, amen. And uh, it really was an opportunity to love one another and to, and to uh, have grace towards one another, you know, and, and see the operations of God in each and every one of us and how that we all partake and operate and are functioning in the, in the place that God has given us and the graces that he's given us and the strengths that he's given us. But uh, like I said, we, we, we brought what we call the Kingdom Summit. Kingdom Summit is obviously the Kingdom of God, right? God wants to rule your heart first, amen? He's got to get your life in order. He's got to clean us up. It's called discipleship. It's called training to bring us to that place of maturity, right? Well, so... In that, uh, we brought this message, Kingdom Kingdom Summit, if you will, this work of the Lord, uh, this commission, amen, to bring sonship and bring significance to the body of Christ and help teach them and help them understand that God is trying to preserve us, amen. He's trying to, he's trying to uh, fortify us and strengthen us, amen, for the right hour and for the right season, and wherever you're at in your walk with the Lord. So, and the word summit means, um, it says, Fulfilling the perfect will of God, the highest attainable level of achievement. Now, in the world, right, we think that, you know, we need to elevate to all these positions and titles a man has out there. And, of course, in the body of Christ, the way it's gotten now is that we're trying to be the next thing, which is now the apostles, right? And funny thing is, is that when you're operating in your grace and your function in the body of Christ, you're not worried about being anything except what Jesus Christ is in us. In other words, the example that he is as a son of God. That's all you're concerned about. You're concerned about representing your father in the earth. You're concerned about doing his word, which is his work, amen, in the earth. That's it. 
You're not trying to be something like an apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. And I say shepherd because pastor is the only one time it's used in the New Testament there. And every other time it's used as shepherd or shepherding. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that when you finally have attained the highest attainable level of achievement is the kingdom summit. In your heart, the highest level attainable achievement is a son of God or a daughter of God, a fully matured son of God, daughter of God, a weas. Because I want to hear the testimony from my father, well done, thou good and faithful servant Joseph. Amen. I want to hear from the father, this is my beloved weas. This is the one I'm well pleased in. And of course, who's he going to give that work to? Who's he going to give that place to? Well, those that grow up in the kingdom of God, mature, in other words. So, that's what we brought down there to uh, McDaniels, Kentucky. And I will be, later this evening, I'm going to, today, I'm going to post uh, the first video. I'll do it as a live broadcast, and hopefully you guys can partake of that. I'm going to try to do it before the football game, amen? Because <laughs> Dallas is playing today, but anyway. But... Um, the point is, is that we're going to be, I'll bring that forth and give you an example of what God wants to do in the body of Christ right now. And that is bring sonship, bring significance, bring the heart of the Father to the people, amen. And for all you that, that are out there and that you uh, would like uh, us to come to you, amen, you can call us. And I posted my phone number now on my, um, on my signature there, and or you can call the fellowship. And you can request information and 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 uh, on what this is all about as far as the Kingdom Summit. And let me go ahead and post uh, my signature block there because I want you guys to understand that uh, that we're here to serve you, Amen, as a body of Christ. And as I was reading this morning, you know, Paul in writing to the Corinthians, he wasn't. He told them, man, I don't know where you guys got all this from about right. And so there's my phone number and uh, my cell phone number. There's uh, the cell phone, I mean, the number to the fellowship, the office number. You can call and leave a message if we don't respond or answer, if I don't respond or answer, etc. But the point is, is that if you guys would like um, uh, us to come, we have a group of brothers now. Eight of us went to, King, to uh, Kentucky, right? And it was a precious, precious thing, right, to see the love of God in action in one another, to love one another regardless of the likes or the dislikes, amen, the grace of God to be able to have a heart of love towards one another. And not only that, the witness and, and, the, and the testimony that brought to the people of that region, right? For example, the couple's home that we were staying in, uh, Lynn and, uh, let's see here, Sheila, right, we stayed in their home. It was a beautiful home. All eight of us in that home, all of us had room bathroom, you know, everything, man, just decked out, man, food, right? We didn't have one of anything, right? And then, and then I remember the sister sharing with me, Sister Sheila, she says, every one of you knows the Word of God, amen? And it wasn't something that, you know, that it's, it's not something that you're going to get in a seminar, right? You go to a schooling or you go to conferences and stuff and you're trying to pick up all this fresh anointing, fresh strength, amen. But the thing is, is that if your heart is not in relationship to your father, then you cannot have fellowship with your with the body of Christ. You cannot break off Christ to the people if you haven't been spending any time with the Father. That's the way it works, right? As as John the Baptist said of Jesus, right? <clears throat> Master, they told him, you know, he that is beyond he that is over there is baptizing more than is baptizing now. And John the Baptist said to him, a man can receive nothing except to be given to him from heaven. In other words, you want to receive from the Father, you want to lombano, take all that you can take in order to use it for the glory of the kingdom of God, then you're not going to get that if you're not spending time in his presence. It's that Zoe life of God, right? Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. These very words, amen, which, which, which we're going to get into, the seed of God, the sperm of God, and what that means, right? It's not an everyday term that we use, right? <laughs> The sperm of God, right? Well, what are we saying here, man? What what are you talking about, Joseph? Gosh, that's that's a little bit uh, that's a little bit out there, right? Well, I'm gonna show you the Word of God here in a little while, but I wanted to uh, share with you guys that, like I said, about this trip, and uh, there's a quite a bit that happened. Like I said, I'll be posting the audios for all these uh, uh, sessions that were performed, and uh, we had Brother Ron 
from Cincinnati that came down. He brought a group of four men with him, or four of them total. And uh, they were there, you know, and he brought his part of significance. And then Brother Jeff was sharing. And like I said, eight of us all together came. I drove to Marshall, and then from there we went up to Kentucky. And the point is, is that uh, Brother Jeff was sharing, and, and it was just powerful. Wisdom of God, amen. And and I remember talking to one of the sisters, boy, and she was, she was telling me, it's just so precious, you know, what, what the Lord is doing here in these words. You know, the life that they have, amen, and she was crying, you know, in her heart, and you could see her crying, and, 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 and I just told her, you know, you know, I don't remember what I said to her exactly, but I was just, you know, I was just uh, kind of moved by the sovereignty of God, amen, and, uh, you know, the thing is, is that um, not everybody's ready to receive the message of the kingdom of God. First of all, you've got to acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, amen, as Peter, right, uh, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. That revelation of who Jesus is and who he wants you to be, a son of God in the earth, a daughter of God in the earth, representing the Father, that revelation right there is what every one of us has to answer to. Who are you? Right? Who am I to you? Jesus saying, who am I to you, body of Christ? I'm just not, I'm more than just your Savior. I didn't just come to redeem you and save you for, you know, just for, just, just to feel good, right? I didn't come to teach you about my ways and, and to spend time with you and live with you and, and train you just so that, you know, you can be saved and live eternally. And the thing about eternal life, it wasn't just, it wasn't that, yeah, you're going to be eternally living, but the, the issue with that is that it's going to be either heaven or hell. You're going to be either with the Father or away from the Father. You're going to still be alive. So that message that you're going to live forever, that should have been the right approach is what in, in our, in our, uh, when we first heard the message of the gospel, right? And if we would have understood that we're going to be able to have the wisdom of God, the life of God, the power of God, the strength of God, the anointing, the grace, etc., of God in our lives, if we would have understood that, rather than you're going to live forever, you see, I'd much rather have wisdom and, and, and help with my life now. <laughs> And how to bring God into my life, amen. How to be directed by the Father, amen. But directed by the Spirit of God. But um, anyway, praise God. Well, that's kind of what uh, took place a little bit. And uh, we're going to be, like I said, discussing some of that more and more. And if you have any questions about wanting uh, the brotherhood to, you know, the, the these brothers that came down. I mean, all of us had our part, right? I was doing video but another one of the elders, he was involved in video. Brother Jeff was sharing, you know, the message, different messages. Then we had the brothers that came up, and they were sharing their examples of sonship and, and what they came into in the Lord and so on. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, time, amen, with these people and with these brothers and sisters. And they were just so hungry. And I remember one, one brother, his name was uh, Stoy, and he was an older gentleman, very gracious, amen. And uh, we... <laughs> I was going to go back to the main sanctuary, the main building there, and he says, you know, he was motioning me to come, come over here, please. Basically, you know, come down and sit with me. I want to hear more about this kingdom of God, amen, and the way of God. And it was so sweet, amen. You can see his heart just hungry for the Lord, amen. And as the word says, that blessed, is all, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled, amen. If you want God, if you want the kingdom of God, if you want the way of God, then he will fulfill his word to you. But you see, it's not this watered-down gospel that we've heard all our lives, amen. The kingdom of God is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you your suke, your soul. He trained us to understand this because he knew that when the time came, and it was a, uh, it was a, a decision time to make whether you're going to represent him in the earth or not, he knew that if you didn't die to yourself, you were, you were always going to choose yourself, right? It's called self-preservation, the number one strength of the soul, right? And so, anyway, he knew this about us. And he knew that unless I've trained you and taught you and brought discipline to your lives and spent time with you, you're not going to be worth nothing to me. And that's what it is, right? We're, we, we, we're in that place where, you know, we, we don't want to be a part of the Babylonian system, right? Everywhere we go, we see that there's issues where everything's out of order with the Word of God. 
the government structure is always messed up, right? You got women that are elders, you got women that are pastors and all these gifts and stuff that Jesus Christ graced to the male, not because he was any anything special, but because of order. Who did God bring first? He brought the male first, right? He put the responsibility on him first. And then he brought the woman to him and made her help me. She was helping him. Her role in helping him wasn't any less significant than, than his role in serving the Father and being obedient to God. Everybody had a function and a part. Nobody was concerned about that you're doing more than I am, you're more than me. And we didn't have any of that in Kentucky. Everybody just flowed. It was so beautiful. Amen? We were all bringing forth the word of the Lord to different, in different situations and scenarios. Nobody was interested in trying to be better than one another or trying to draw their attention. We were just serving, 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 dying to yourself, dying to yourself. And when the opportunity came forth, amen, to bring forth the words of life, that's what we do, amen. That's what we do as sons of God. Amen. So anyway, um, my, I posted my, uh, my phone number there and the phone number to the fellowship. And if you guys want to give, you know, there's nothing wrong with giving to the cause of God, amen. If you know it's the Lord, amen. Because there's many fields out there that we're, we're given and we're involved in that have nothing to do with the kingdom of God. Fact of the matter, right? Now, I want to take you to something here in, in light of that. And uh, I want to show you something here. Second Chronicles 15. I read this last week. I'm going to read it again. Praise God. <clears throat> Second Chronicles 15, starting with verse 1. And the Spirit of God came on Azariah, the son of Obed. And he went out to meet Asa. And said unto him, Hear me, hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you. Why are you with him? And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if you forsake him, he will forsake you. All right? Basic principle, right? If you draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you. If you want God, you're going to draw on God if you're going to seek God. But if you don't want him, then he doesn't want you. But you've got to initiate, Amen. He did his part already through Christ. Amen. Now we got to do our part to follow the example. Now for a long season, Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. So for a long season, right? So in other words, the systems that are out there, the, the fellowships and everything that's all structured out there already, right? They're moving on in the Babylonian system. They don't understand the government of God. They don't understand why God wants to set it up according to a certain pattern. And I'll tell you why, sons of God, is because he's trying to preserve you. In how many situations do you know of where the, there's a one man uh, that's, that's all alone out there? He doesn't have a right or a left. There's no, there's no team leadership, right? There's no elder rule. There's no established elders there. Just one man, right? And he's getting pulled in every direction you can think of. He's getting told this by this situation. This sister has this concern. Everybody has all their little tidbits that they want to drop in. Pastor, I want to serve with you. I want to be in the leadership with you. I want to... I want to do all this. Well, then they have their little systems on that, how they how they get you through it, you know, and you go through all these classes and trainings and so you can learn our format and our way, right? Then you will get you ordained and then you can serve with us in leadership. My goodness. Let me tell you something. Jesus didn't have to go to college. He didn't have to do all these classes. He didn't have to do any of that. All he did was he had a relationship with his father. Amen? The apostles, same thing. Some of them were educated, right? Luke the physician, right? Matthew the tax collector, maybe. But the point is, is that they had a relationship with the Father, right? Who are these guys? Man, these are unlearned men, they said of the apostles. The difference was they knew they had been with Jesus Christ, amen. They knew they had a relationship with the Father, amen. Look at what they were bringing forth. Look at the bread of life that they were breaking off and bringing to the body of Christ everywhere they went. Amen? Speaking a word in season, amen. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I may know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Body of Christ, and up to this point, you've been getting it from the wrong source. And God is coming to preserve the body of Christ, amen, to teach us the ways of God. And we're going to get into that in a minute as far as the scriptures. And, and But the point is, is that um, now for a long season, Israel had been without a teach, a, the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. See, all they've ever known, the body of Christ out there, is what they've gotten from the institutions. And it's interesting because when I encounter brothers and sisters, they're like, where did you come from? Who are you? Same thing they said to Jesus, right? Where did you come from? Who sent you? 
But I'll tell you where we come from, amen. We come from the Father, amen. We were generated from the Father, amen. And we come forth to bring the words of life, amen, and bring some understanding to the body of Christ and we, that they might be trained and educated and, and raised up and, and, and brought into discipleship and, and learn the ways of the Father that they might come into their own strength in the Lord. Every one of us has our different operations. You know it's of the world and it's of the, of the Babylonian system when all it's producing is clones of the same kind. That's not what we are, body of Christ. Every one of us has an operation of God in us. Every one of us are different, unique, amen? Fearfully and wonderfully made. And that strength and that grace and those things that he started prophesying from the day you were born in the embryo stage, glory to God, as it says in Psalm. From that time, he started speaking everything into your life, man. And as you came in to know the Lord, you got born again. John 3, right? John 3. Uh, you must be born again or you cannot see the kingdom of God, right? From that time, amen, we begin to ask the Lord, what is my purpose? Why did you create me? What am I doing here on the earth? Amen. And the thing is, is that he begins to reveal to you, amen, what, what he has for you. But it's going to come through the way of God, not through the Babylonian system. All right. So, now, now, verse 4, but when they were in trouble, when they in their trouble did turn unto the Lord God of Israel and sought him, he was found of them. Amen. And in those times there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation, vexation were upon all the inhabitants of the countries. And if you read the preceding few chapters before this, uh, that's it said that they, they, uh, they would go out and in and they didn't have any peace, but but God started bringing his way to the land, amen, started establishing order, started raising up all the walls, amen, and teaching the people by the teaching priests, amen, by these men that went out to, to teach them. And so it says here, verse 6, and nation was destroyed of nation and city of city, for God did vex them with all adversity. In other words, they're saying it was God, but what happened is they dropped the guard and they allowed Right, these inhabitants of this, these nations that were around them to come in, to marry their sons, their sons marrying their daughters, and all of a sudden you have all this confusion. You have all this Babylonian mixed worship, right? They didn't understand the true God. But when they started turning back to the Lord, as he told them, because you turn back to me, the Father, the Lord, I'll turn back to you. Now, verse 7, this is what he said to them. Be ye strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. So the word of the Lord to us as sons of God and daughters of God and every one of you that are out there seeking the way of God and doing it the way of God, he's saying to you, be, be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Our work of going to Kentucky, amen, doesn't come from a man. It comes from the Father, amen. He is our shield and our exceeding great reward, our, our exceeding payment. He's the one that's paying the sons of God, the daughters of God, because we're working for the Father, we're working for the kingdom of God, not for the kingdom of man. Wow. Now, and when Asa heard these words, verse 8, and the prophecy of Obed the prophet, he took courage, right? And he put away all the abominable idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of all the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And so, see, that's what God is doing. He's renewing the altar of the Lord, that first place that he must have in our lives. He redeemed you so that you, he could be first in your lives. Amen? Not can he, so he can be second or third or fourth or fifth or whatever out of, in the list of priorities. First. And in that place is where he's going to begin to bring you to your place. He's got to know that he can trust you, body of Christ. He's got to know that he can lay this burden on you and that you're not going to Exploit it, manipulate it, use it for your own glory. Mm. Now, verse 9. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord was with them. So I'm saying to you, body of Christ, and this is why I read that because I was talking about giving. Or if you want to give to this cause, amen, this posted there, we, you can give at the... At the uh, PayPal to the email info at churchandmarshall.com. You want to specify what the, what the offering is for? You may do so as well. You know the Kingdom Summit, the Church of Marshall, whatever. And the point I'm making is, is that if you see that this work is of the Lord, right? As it says here, 
For they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord was with them, was with him. If you see the work of God, amen, there's no problem in giving to the work of God. So they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Asa. And they offered unto the Lord the, uh, the same time of the spoil which they had brought. And it goes on saying how they made a covenant with God and how they offered to the Lord. Amen. And they were behind the work of God with no complex. So, I'm saying all that to say that this was an example of an apostolic campaign. A group of men that went out into the land and started destroying all the idolatry and establishing the altar of the Lord back in the hearts of the people. And that's exactly what the Lord is doing with this kingdom summit. He's bringing us to that place where we understand that the highest level of achievement that we can attain is the Son of God. Amen. That is the summit. That's the highest place that you can get to. The highest attainable, attainable level of achievement. Amen. Not all this man-made stuff, not all this Babylonian stuff. We are sons of God. We are daughters of God. Amen. And we serve the Father with gladness. And He loves us. He loves you and He loves me. Amen. And He's got a purpose for all of us. Amen. Wow. Alright. Let's, uh, I'm going to post the outline here and, and we're going to get started on the outline because um, the outline lists um, Some very precious, precious principles. And this this particular um, this particular outline, this teaching is called the uh, sperm of God, marriage, the sperm of God, right? And before I I um, get started, I want to read a scripture to you. Amen. <laughs> word the word the word. Amen. All right, here we go. And this is in. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 2. Paul talking to the Corinthians. He says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I, I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. See, a chaste virgin is, 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 is a woman that's pure, right? Well, we are the body of Christ, right? We're the, we're the lady. He's the husband, right? In the, in the mystery of marriage, right? I'm talking about Christ in the church. This is what Paul said in Ephesians 5 over there. And we're going to get into that next week as well. But uh, he says, I espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. Well, why, why, why? The chaste virgin, what's that, what does that mean? Well, in other words, I've espoused you to Christ. I presented you to the bridegroom as a chaste virgin. virgin. Now we can have babies. Now I can bring product into the earth that represents me is what the Lord is saying. You see? But those that are out there involved in the Babylonian system, he can't work with them because they're, they're still impure. They're mixed with the seed of the world, the seed of Babylon. you got situations where you're allowing, you know, those that are involved in, in men and with men, women and women situations, talking to the body of Christ about different things. You don't understand that the seed is all mixed. You know, you use a reference to the world and all in your deliveries of the kingdom of the word of God. The Babylonian seed, I mean, all this mixture is exactly what the enemy wants. Because he knows that if you're all mixed up, then you're not with the Father. You're not with his program, if you will. <clears throat> all right, now, I'm going to read this into in the message translation. The thing that has me so upset is that I care so much about you. And this is the passion of God burning inside me. I promised your hand in marriage to Christ. Presented you as a pure, pure virgin to her husband. You see that? I want to read another verse down here where I was talking about, you know, this thing about the kingdom summit, right? It's not a situation where, you know, what the Lord is doing at Marshall's is to go and take over, right? <laughs> no. The fellowships and so on, all this stuff. You know, these men of God, they're all concerned about, you know, who's going to be in charge and who's going to have the final word and all this stuff. <laughs> and uh, and look at this scripture in, in 2 Corinthians 10, 15, right? This is out of the message again, the message translation. And Paul says here, we're not barging in on the rightful work of others, interfering with their ministries, demanding a place in the sun with them. What we're hoping for is that as your lives grow in faith, you'll play a part within our expanding work. 
But what are we trying to expand here? What is the work of expansion? What are we doing? We're bringing the kingdom of God everywhere we go. Amen. That's what we should be doing. The reign and the rule of Jesus Christ in the hearts of, of the body of Christ. And then eventually bringing co corporate anointing, corporate strength, corporate unity. Because we're all serving one master. We're not seeking to break rank. Amen. We're all doing our part and function without any conflicts. And I was stating that earlier is that when you're in the kingdom of God and you're serving the Lord, you don't care about all these titles. Right? You're not interested in all that. You're interested in representing the Father. You see what I'm saying? A son of God or daughter of God, just like Jesus did. And so because of that, the highest place that you can achieve is to be a son of God, a daughter of God. And like I said, I'm going to be posting a lot of videos and stuff on this, and uh, I encourage you to, to listen to these messages over and over and over and over again. Get, that, get this word in your heart, amen. And it might produce Christ, amen. All right. So let's get started with the with the outline here, amen. <clears throat> he says here, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to read three verses, Matthew 13, 24. Let's start with that one. Matthew 13, 24. All right. Like I said, this is called the sperm of God, amen, so y'all get ready. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. I'm sorry. The kingdom of heaven is likened, like to unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Okay? So who is the field of God, right? You are. I am. We are the field of God. And he says, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. All right? The word seed here is the Greek word sperma, S-P-E-R-M-A. And so the definition says from, from which a plant germinates, the seed, the grain, or the kernel, which contains within itself the germ of the future plants. Right? Metaphorically, is a seed, a residue, a few survivors reserved as the germ of the next generation. Right? The remnant. <clears throat> Just as keep the seed is kept, from the harvest for sowing, right? And then it says the semen bureau, the product of this semen, the seed, the children, the offspring, the progeny, the family, the tribe, the posterity, whatever possesses vital force of life giving power of the divine energy of the Holy Spirit operating within our spirits by which we are regenerated, all right? Something sown, that is a seed, including the male sperm, by implication offspring, the remnant, as if kept for planting. Now that word seed, a sperma, comes from the word spirio, which is to sow, to scatter. So when someone is sowing the, king, the seed of the word of God, they are sowing the sperma of God, right? And then that word comes from the word to draw. In other words, you got to pull it out. You got you to you uh, you distribute the seed, in other words. You know, like if you have a seed in a bag and you're, and you're distributing grain, right, you have to pull it out, all right? Now look at this in Mark chapter 4, verse 32. Mark chapter 4, verse 32. Mm. All right, we're going to start with verse 30. Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like a grain of a mustard seed, which, when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seed that be in the earth. The word seed there, the second word seed, is sperma. The first word is the mustard seed, specifically. So it's less than all the sperma, the seed that be, that be in the earth. But when it grows up, but when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all the herbs, and shooteth out great branches, so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow. So see, when it grows up, in other words, when that seed of God in your heart grows up to maturity, then the birds of the air and the fowls can come and lodge under, the, under those branches. In other words, the birds and, and those that come and lodge are the body of Christ, that are able to come under the government of God, the peace of God, 
and allow the peace of God, the government of God to rule in their lives and in their hearts, on their heart. And come into a place where you begin to serve and you understand your part in the kingdom of God. And it's not like you have to ask anybody, right? You just you just know what to do because of that life of God in you. It pulls you and directs you, right? Directs you through desire. He begins to turn your heart because of your relationship with him. And he begins to turn it to where your heart gravitates to the things that you care about. The things that are being inspired out of your spirit, man. Not uh, unsanctified, but sanctified. In other words, pure and holy without any ill-conceived motive. No selfishness, in other words. Have you ever thought about when, when, uh, when they circumcised, right, the, the Hebrew children? And they cut the foreskin right off of their male part, right, the penis. And in that cutting off, what it was symbolizing is that when the seed comes forth, no flesh is going to touch it. That's what God was saying with that. It's the same thing in our lives when we come forth out of our spirit. He does not want any seed to mingle, any flesh, I'm sorry, to mingle with that seed. Because if it does, it aborts the purpose of God. So God is trying to bring us to a place where we're pure and holy so that when he comes forth, something is being produced for the glory of God. Right? Eternal. Eternally produced. Amen. Wow. Now, so let me see here. We're going to read another verse. Now we're going to start with Genesis 111. Now I'm going to just come from the outline here. Genesis 111. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit. After his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. You know, when my wife and my and myself, when we got married and stuff, well, we wanted to have children, amen. We wanted to come together and have children. And, uh, well, we did, right? We had two sons, amen. And uh, the point is, is that we didn't consciously say to this, say this to one another because I didn't have this revelation back then, but when you and your husband come together, when a husband and wife come together, what they're doing is they're making seed after their kind, right? The woman and her part, the male and his part, come together and they produce they produce a product that's after their kind. This is what God said of Adam. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let's produce something after our kind. Well, to the glory of God, everything that was produced hereafter was the God kind. So you and I, sons of God, daughters of God, are the God kind. Now, not in your unrefined, unfinished ways before you got born again, right? Because after you get born again, your soul still has to be saved. You've got to be trained and renewed to the Word of God. It's called salvation of the soul. And, uh, but the point is, is that as you grow up and mature, you finally become that representation of God on the earth. Amen? Now you're a product of God. And it's just like a, a seed that gets sown in the ground, Amen? You're not going to go sow seed in a hard, crusty ground or in a field that's full of weeds. You're going to go and plow the ground, take it up, soften the ground, plant the seed. And that seed, that, that, that tree, if you will, that plant is going to take time to grow up. It's the same thing in our lives and our relationship to the Father and the kingdom of God. Amen. It's going to take time. Amen. All right. Now, so the word seed here is the word uh, zera, Z-E-R-A. And it means seed sowing offspring. A sowing, a seed, semen, virile, offspring, descendants, posterity, children of moral quality. A practitioner of righteousness. You see that? It's the same word, right, in, in the Greek that says sperma. It's the same principle here. Man. Let me go to it here and, and look at it from the Bible side here. Uh, the seed, zera, Z-E-R-A. And, and it, it's fruit, plant, sown, time, posterity. You know, your children are products of your seed, your kind. You know, or an orange only produces after its kind. An apple, a lime, you know, a plant, uh, a rose, cattle, sheep, oxen. Everything produces after its kind. Amen? The seed is in itself. It can't produce anything but what its kind is. And by the same token, 
if you're distributing the seed of God, amen, then you're going to reap a harvest of that seed. But if you're, dis <clears throat> if you're sowing perversion, division, uh, doubt, and unbelief, hatred, right? Everything the opposite of God, right? Bad nature, bad morals, you know, bad character. If you're involved in fornication, adultery, right? Drunkenness, you know, effeminate, you know, if you're malakos, you know, if you're if you're all these things that are that are contrary to the kingdom of God, well, guess what? That's what you're going to reap in your life. It's the same thing. The seed is coming out of your mouth, the words, they're gonna reproduce after their kind. Amen. So put Change the faucet, amen. Change, get another source, amen. Get the word of God, get the seed of God, get the kingdom of God, amen. Now, and uh, so now let's look at the next section here. The word is sperma, the word. Now, um, the power cells of reproduction are in the word. Jesus knew this. Jesus knew that the power of change is in my word, the seed, right? And uh, Matthew 13, 24 Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed into um, in his field. Right? The word seed, again, is the word sperma, from which a plant germinates. The seed, the grain or kernel, which contains within itself the germ of future plants, of the grains or kernel sown, metaphorically a seed residue or a few survivors reserved as the germ of the next generation. <clears throat> the semen barrel, that's what, that which is produced by a husband and his wife, amen. So the divine energy of the Holy Spirit operating within our spirit, man, by which we are regenerated. It says soul there, and I'll correct that, but it really, it's, it's in your spirit, man. This is where the life of God is. This is where the product, the reproduction of God comes forth out of your spirit, okay? Now, Mark 4, 30, 30 and 32, I read that earlier, and it was saying that Seed is the sperma, the word of God, amen. The seed, the word. Mark chapter 4, verse 32. 30, I mean, Mark 4, 30. All right? Mark chapter 4. And I read already these uh, foundational scriptures, but I want to go back to this one as well. Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God, and with what comparison shall we compare it? It is like the grain of a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. The word seeds is the word sperma, right? All the seeds that are in the earth. Is, it, but when it's grown, it's just later when it, when it grows up, it becomes the greatest of all the seeds. Amen? But the point is, is that when that seed germinates, it finally is able to be the product that it was destined to be. Amen. And the product that we are to become is to become like Christ. He is the pattern son. Amen. He is the way. All right. Now. Um, <clears throat> so Jesus is the sperma of God. The word of God is the seed of God. John 1.1. 1, 1, In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The word is the seed. The seed is the word. The word reproduces after its kind, which is Jesus Christ, which is the kingdom of God in our lives. So we're alive with the living reproductive cell of its own kind, monogene, the only one of his kind. John 1.18. Watch this. John 1.18. Watch this. All right. John 1, 18. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten we ask, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. The thing is, when you come into maturity, you begin to declare the kingdom of God. You don't even realize you're doing it because the standard is lifted up high now. You've attained to the summit, if you will, your constant goal is to go up, to go up, to be resurrected, to be like Christ, in other words. All right? And it says here, the only begotten son, the weos. The only begotten is the word, the Greek word monogenes, which means single of its kind, only, the only kind, the only born the soul. Mono is single, and, and, and the, Greek, the other Greek word that comes from geneo means to become or come into existence, to be. The only one that comes into existence or is able to be is Jesus Christ. He's the monogene. And that's the, the pattern that we're trying to reproduce, amen. That's what we want to reproduce 
in each and every one of us. That's what God wants to reproduce in our lives. Amen? Now, praise God. So, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Hath seen is the word to properly to stare at. All right? That is to discern clearly. No man has discerned clearly, right, God at any time. You cannot discern or see the Father clearly unless you grow up into maturity. You will not be able to see the Father. You will not see his ways. You can't acknowledge the Father in one another when the Father is coming forth. You don't understand this when you're being corrected. It's the Father correcting you. It's not a man. It's not a person. It's not about who it comes through. Right? Because it can come through my sons, which it has before. My wife. I'm no better than them in the eyes of God. You understand? When we're out of order, we need correction. God brings you what he needs to bring you to bring you back in alignment with him. Realign you. Synchronize you. So you're working in harmony. Amen? Amen? Hmm. Now, the only begotten, as I said, is the only born that is soul, remaining soul or single, generated, amen, after the spirit, amen. See, the heart or the womb of the man, the goal is, is to get you to a place where you're pregnant. You have a product, amen, full of promise, right? And, and you have to receive that word, that sperm of God, the word of God. In order to conceive it, it will not come forth if it's not received in your heart, in your spirit, man. You see, it comes forth out of your spirit. Now, James 1 21, I won't quote it because I already know the scripture. It says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Souls, right? It's okay. 5590 is the Greek word. And the word engrafted word is the word infutos. And it means to puff up, puff up, to blow up, to germinate. In other words, to bring forth. That word has to get in our hearts and our lives. You must fellowship this word of God constantly. Get it in your hearts and in your mouths. Amen. That, that word, that's all that comes out is that word of God. Amen. No opinions of man. No philosophical views. No psychological profiles. Nothing. Just pure seed of the word of God. Amen. And that's what has the power to produce in every one of our lives. Amen. Amen. Now, so, let's see, what time is it? Wow, got about seven minutes here. All right, so, uh, Jeremiah 4, 3 through 4. Let's look at that real quick. Jeremiah 4. And this is an example, right, of a wise farmer, right? You know, I was encouraged by the Lord, Amen. And this is the word that God brought me. Says, Joseph, you must be wise as a farmer, right, in relationship to your wife. Your wife doesn't know what you know, Joseph. That's what, that's what Brother Jeff told me. Amen. God was bringing some alignment, realignment to my life, amen. And I received it without any conflict or problems. Amen. You must be a wise farmer, Brother Jeff says to me. Because a wise farmer is going to know when the ground is ready to sow. Don't go into these big dialogues. Just stay in here, three, four minute, five minute conversations. That's it. We get regard to the kingdom of God. Because if you're sowing the seed of the word of God, guess what? It's going to come back. It's going to bring forth the harvest. It takes time, amen, to sow the seed and, and to bring it into one another's lives. Don't be in a hurry, Joseph. Just take your time, man. Let the word of God, let the Holy Ghost do the work, amen. And I said, yes, sir. Praise God. Praise God. So, Jeremiah 4, 3 and 4, amen. This is what he says here. For thus said the Lord to the men of Judah and to Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and sow not among thorns, amen. Don't sow if the ground ain't ready, amen. That's part of the, 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 the maturity of coming into the Lord is that you understand when to sow the seed. You don't just distribute it all willy nilly and just lay it everywhere, right? The fowls come. Right? The, 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 the thorny ground, the stony ground, uh, the shallow ground, and then the good ground. Wait for the ground to get good and prepared. Amen? And then he says in verse 4, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Circumcise. Cut away the foreskin of your heart. And take away the foreskins of your heart 
Ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of the evil of your doings. You see, God was telling them, break up this ground, man. All this harshness, right? Break it down. Be soft and pliable. This when my seed comes forth, be ready for me, says the Lord. So that when my seed and the word of the sperm of God comes forth, it goes right into your heart, man. You begin to meditate on it. You begin to pray about it. You write these scriptures down. You're meditating on them, glory to God. And you're coming before the Lord and you're asking the Lord to reveal, to show, to teach you, amen. And praise God before you know it, man. You're beginning to understand this now. It's beginning to grow in your heart. The kingdom of God is like a woman that hid leaven in three measures of meal, amen. You don't see the kingdom of God working in you, but glory to God, if that seed of God is in your heart, the sperm of God is in your heart, guess what? It's going to reproduce the kingdom of God in your life without any problem. Three measures of will, 30, 1600. Three measures of meal, 30, 1600. Three loaves, amen. You see? Constantly growing, constantly growing, constantly growing. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn. The good, the acceptable, and the perfect. Amen? Coming to that place of maturity, amen, where you can exemplify the character of God in every aspect of your lives, our lives. Hmm. Amen. <clears throat> so the foreskin of our hearts is a carnal. The carnal man cannot receive the things of God, neither can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. You cannot see it because you're carnal if you're not seeing the kingdom of God. So I encourage you, get your heart before the Lord and ask the Father, show me the Father. Show me the kingdom of God. Show me the way of God. Amen. And he will. Mm. Proverbs 16.1. The heart, amen, must be ready before the Lord. Shall he come and find faith in the earth? Amen. He needs to find us ready, always ready to do whatever he's called us to do. Amen. The drop of a hat. Amen. The preparation of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirit. It's God that, that is able to understand all this. See, we think because we're able to hide it, right, amongst one another, because we're not walking in the sermon of after the spirit versus after the soul, right? There's no distinguishing there. We think we're okay. Let me tell you something about it, Christ. When the Lord sends you that individual and exposes you, don't shut him down, man. Receive it with gladness. Let that word get in your heart. Those stripes, amen. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. You're going to learn obedience by the correction of God in your life. It's the way of God. And when you start receiving the glory to God, then all of a sudden, you, the revelation of the kingdom of God starts expanding in your heart and your life. The sonship starts expanding. You realize that you're significant because you're a son or daughter of God after the Father. Not after this world and after his foolishness. Mm. It is any wonder that Satan wants to take the males out, right? Because they're the ones that bring significance to their sons and daughters. And they're the ones that provide covering over their wives. And if you're and if you're unmarried or if you if you went through a divorce or something, then well then that's where the body of Christ plays their part. The elder role, the eldership. They're providing covering. That's the word of God, amen? God had a way and had a plan for all this. We've just got to follow his way, amen, his plan. Amen? All right, well, it's 9.59. Let me see. Do I got time for one more scripture? Hmm. Yeah, I do want to read one more scripture in Hosea chapter 10. Is it chapter 10? Hosea. No, that wasn't it. Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Yeah. I want to read this in the tr message translation, and I've read this many times. This is Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Just to just to put a finalization of what I'm, what's been going on here today. My people are ruined because they don't know what's right or true. Because you've turned your back on knowledge, I've turned my back on you priests. Because you refuse to recognize the revelation of God, I'm no longer recognizing your children. And I encourage every one of you to read that section right there in, in that message translation because 
The point is, is that he's saying that I'm no longer recognizing the things that you've been producing, priests of God, because it's all tainted with sin and perversion and carnality. But, um, <clears throat> but the thing is, is that the people of God don't have distinction anymore. This is why, you know, in that scripture that I read earlier in Second Second Chronicles 15, right? It said that the, 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 that the nation of Israel didn't have a priest. They didn't have anyone that could teach them distinctions about God. And uh, it says, Now for a long season Israel had been without a true, without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. You see? And that's what God is doing, right? He's bringing it forth from the hearts of sons and daughters of God that represent the Father in the earth. And by the way, while we were down there in Kentucky, the women from the fellowship came to Fort Worth, Texas. They had 150 women there. And Sister Charlene was sharing. And, uh, and, and Arlene and these other sisters partaking. Some sisters were involved in Judah singing, you know, and singing a song. And then they'd go back and they'd put their apron on so they could continue to serve the people. And these people were blown away by all the unity. Amen? And by all the servanthood of the brothers and sisters. 150 women crying wanting that significance of God, that seal of God on their hearts, to know that they are sons and daughters of God, daughters of God in this case, and that they are most precious, amen, in the eyes of the Father, amen. Praise God. All right, well, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and this time, Lord God, to bring forth your words, Father God, to teach your people the difference, amen. I pray that the kingdom of God would will reach their hearts and lives, Father God, that they would grow up, Father God, in Jesus Christ, come to that place of maturity. And I, I thank you, Father God, for all these lives today that have partaken, and I thank you for those that will partake in the future, Father. We bless you, Father, and we give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.
worship the 